Hey, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. We're going through the Bible, giving four minutes to each book to summarize. Yesterday was book one, Genesis. Today is book two, Exodus. It's the second book of Moses, the second book of the Pentateuch, the second book of most Bibles, the way they're put together, Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, almost every Bible puts Exodus as the second book. Now, Exodus, if we're going to put the whole book together into a, a summation of four minutes, I want you to think about it as a book of Exodus, a book of journey, a book out into life and the calling of God. And we'll see certain themes throughout, including God's faithfulness as he delivers his people, the challenge of faith and obedience, especially when times are tough. So here's the book. It starts out with Israel in oppression. They're, they're enslaved by Pharaoh and the Egyptian money machine, and they're being forced to work. They have no say in what's going on. The persecution is intense. And into that setting, God calls Moses, who God has protected in a most unique way, actually rearing Moses in Pharaoh's household as an adopted grandson of sort. And so Moses is called after he has been kicked out of the Egyptian society and Egyptian place for murdering uh, uh, a man who had been abusing some Hebrews. And so Moses has been living in the wilderness as a shepherd. Now, God calls to Moses from a burning bush, and the bush is on fire, but not consumed. And in that time period, God not only introduces himself to Moses, but he makes his name known to Moses. And the name has four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, and then Vav, He. Uh, some people will say Yahweh, but a good devout Jew doesn't say the name of God at all, doesn't even try. It's that holy a name. This is where Moses had to take his shoes off because he was on holy ground as God pronounced his name and put the call onto Moses' life. So Moses is told, go lead my people out of bondage. Moses goes back into Egypt, and when he goes back in, through a series of plagues, God shows that he is dominant over Pharaoh and all of the gods of the Egyptian religious system. And ultimately, after the last plague, death of the firstborn, uh, Pharaoh says, all right, the people can leave. Now, death of the firstborn happened all over Egypt, except at the homes that celebrated the very first Pesach, or Passover. And a sacrificial lamb was slain, and the lamb's blood was painted over the lintel and the, the jams of the door, and the, the angel of death would pass over those homes. And as that Passover took place, the people left. They go into the wilderness, and they had this wilderness experience with a lot of difficulty. They have to find food. They have to find water. Um, they, they have the parting of the Red Sea to even get away from Pharaoh's army. And all of this is miraculously provided for by God. Not always the way the people want it, but always the way that met their needs. At Mount Sinai in Exodus, they get the Ten Commandments. They fall into the idolatry of the golden calf as they, they violate those commandments, even before they get them in some ways. But ultimately, as the book of Exodus continues and they continue on that journey, we see God being faithful every step of the way and delivering the people. And we see the people in their challenge of their faith uh, trying to find obedience when it's not an easy thing to do at times. But it's all wrapped up in the journey that's very much like a journey all of us make. Exodus, a book of journeys that shows the, 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 the deliverance of a faithful God to people who are challenged to obedient faith. That's Exodus in four minutes. Join me tomorrow. We've got Leviticus. That's your video thought for the day.